Gunsmoke, starring James Arness as Matt Dillon. Milk, Lockheed. I said milk. Make it fast. Yes, sure. Slob. Yes, sure. You stole my cattle. Stole my woman. Draw! Go away, Sonny. I said draw. Where you want it? Oh! It's Jack Lickletter on the go. Come on along. We're going places, doing things, and meeting people everywhere in their search for happiness. This portion brought to you by. Well, Johnny, you make a very good Western barkeep. Well, thank you, Jack. Do you think I get a job in one of those real Westerns? I don't know. Without that mustache, you're just a big nothing. <laughs> thank you. John, thank you. You shot me. Your cap thank was a little late, but that's okay, too. Uh, good morning. Today we're going to meet a man who never starred in a TV series or a movie, and yet he's responsible for more blazing gun draws in Hollywood than any other man. And uh, most of today's stars, of course, you know, were very little acquainted with a revolver before they landed their roles as a Western hero. And they had to be made into convincing gunfighters. And this is the man who made them. His name is Arvo Ojala, and Arvo is acknowledged as the dean of Hollywood's fast draw experts. And also, I understand you're reputed to be the fastest gun alive. Well, I try to be. Never been up against me yet, though. No, I haven't. Well, you're lucky, because you'd still have that title. <laughs> <laughs> and the people that he's been up against, his pupils, uh, I, I mean to say, are part of the who's who of Western stars, James Arness, James Garner, Hugh O'Brien, Dale Robertson, Rory Calhoun, Audie Murphy, you taught... Clint Walker, Kirk Douglas, Tab Hunter, of course your eight-year-old son John here, who's quite good at the guns. And also, uh, you people who watch Gunsmoke might wonder who Matt Dillon outdraws at the beginning of every show every week. It's old Arvo here. And Arvo also makes the Western uh, guns, uh, gun belts and holsters for most of the stars. Paladin is the most famous and Have Gun Will Travel. And today we're coming to you from Arvo's unique fast draw shop in North Hollywood, California. We're going to meet this actor, this teacher, this craftsman who accomplished all of this after being crippled for two years with arthritis in just one minute. But first of all, you people at home who might have trouble sleeping at night, here's a special message of interest to you. We're back at Arvo's gun shop, and it was pointed out to me that his business today is worth one quarter of a million dollars, and yet just eight years ago, Arvo Ajala was penniless, and he was suffering from what started to be, I guess, an incurable case of arthritis. That's right, Jack. How bad, how bad did it get to be? Well, I couldn't hardly get out of bed in the morning. I had to pull myself out, and my wrist was swollen about twice the size of natural, and my back was stiff. I couldn't straighten up. My ankles were swollen up. Do you have any idea what caused this? Did it just come on? Uh... Well, I was up in Washington, in Oregon, and I used to drive bulldozer up there in the rain, and they soaked to the skin every day, and my body got chilled. That didn't help any. No, and I probably ate the wrong foods. And well, now, uh, when you came down with this arthritis, what did you decide to do? Uh, did you well, feel it was anything? I thought I'd come down to California and thaw out a little bit. The hot weather? Yes. Live in the desert? Yes, but didn't, didn't, didn't seem to help any, so I, uh, you know, went to different doctors, and they said I had arthritis and incurable. Boy, and for a man <laughs> who's active all your life, I imagine uh, you didn't react too well to that. No, I didn't like that very much. Couldn't even drive a hammer back on the gun. You never thought you'd handle a gun again? No, I didn't. And I know that you more or less grew up uh, with gun handling. Uh, how long were you down with your disease? In About two years. And uh, you, were you working during this time, or could you? Well, I tried to work. I drove a bulldozer on a ridge route way up on the high ridges, and I could hardly turn that lever and pull levers with my hands, but I still did it. Pained every time I did it. Were you married? No, luckily not. So you married after this? Yeah, I couldn't even support myself hardly. Well, how were you living? You just... Uh, well, I... Lived in a rooming house, and they even locked me outside once, and I had to go sleep in a cellar for about a month there. Because you couldn't pay? <laughs> yeah. 
Boy, no one wants to live like this. Well, now you seem that you're completely recovered from uh, from your arthritis. Do you have any side effects? Well, I tell you, I'm the best weather forecaster in town. I think I can tell you. <laughs> Day ahead of time is going to rain. <laughs> but you feel okay now. Oh, yeah, wonderful, that. wonderful. No pain. No. You move around. That's right. And uh, how do you how do you get over? Was it the weather? No, I went on a strict diet, just natural foods, and very low protein and a lot of alfalfa tablets. I could probably go to Santa Anita and run first place over there. <laughs> With the, all your alfalfa. <laughs> and the, well, how did you come upon this diet? The doctor recommended? You just no, my aunt was a, kind of a health nutritionist, and with the assistance of an expert nutritionist, we put me on a special diet, and I stayed on it. And well, I bet you're thankful for that. I sure am. Uh, right after your arthritis bout, I know you, you started getting Western bit parts. Uh, but before we talk about that, uh, when did you first start using guns? Now, I know your boy here well, is eight years old. How young were you? Well, I was about four years old, and I first had a Daisy Air rifle when I started out with that. I don't you think that's a little bad? Well, wh why did you need a gun at four? Well, I just rattled rattlesnakes around and predatory animals, and I just got to learn to use a gun. Your dad teach you? No, I taught myself. You did? Yes. Did you want to be a cowboy when you grew up? No. No? I just loved the sport of guns, and I just... Kept practicing, practicing, shooting. Well, now, what about John here? How old was he when he, he learned to handle a gun? He's about four years old. You want to be a cowboy? Mm, no, a jet pilot and a doctor. Jet pilot and a doctor. Yeah. You, you sort of, uh, being around this end of the life so much, would you prefer being back in the days of the Old West when there were Indians and cowboys? Would you like that better? Mm-mm. Why? Mm, I, I just wouldn't like it. <laughs> Doesn't appeal to you, huh? No? How did this facet of your life begin, uh, Arvo? Pardon? How did this facet of, of your life begin, being, uh, building uh, holsters and... Well, 51, I started in the motion pictures. And uh, that's when everyone was joining, really. Yes. The, the Westerns began. Yes. And uh, when did you become such a fast draw artist? Well, I started practicing in about 1951, and I watched the other fellows in the movies, and they were kind of slow. They just had a handful of air every time you'd drive a you know, gun, yeah. get a gun out. And uh, so I started working on a special fast draw which I designed. And I designed this holster at the same time, you know, to keep How it. How fast can you draw a gun and shoot? About a sixth of a second. A sixth of a second? Yes. How long did you practice to be able to be that fast? Well, I practiced about four hours a day. <laughs> and have you ever been outdrawn? Well, in gun smoke every Saturday night. Yeah. Other than that. <laughs> Well, I want to see some of the mementos you have around here. You have some guns, actually, from the Old West. I want to yes, see I you do. do some fast drawing. I want you to show me. We have a lot to do. But first of all, I want to ask uh, the people at home if they're the type of person that's on the go all the time, and uh, they feel that they're really too tired to be having fun out of life. Here's a recommendation, I think, that we'll give it to them. Very good, Arvo. Very good. Let me see. <laughs> I'll break my <laughs> finger off. Now, what, what is the trick to that? Is there a... You just put it like this, your finger just twirl it, kind of juggling. Just moving. getting the momentum. Yeah. That's yeah. not a different gun, huh? No, same thing. Now, let, let's see some real fast draw. Let's see you really, like you're going to be really against a top pro. Well, that was pretty good. You shot him right in the head. No, two shots. Two shots? Yes. Where? I'll do it in slow motion for you. Now, watch. And you did that? Yes. Let me see that again now, fast. Now, two shots. That was two? Yes. Well, very good. Now, uh, do you have something tricky? Like, um, let's say I'm the sheriff. I walk in. I say, give me, give me your gun here. Pardon me. You shot me, though. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> let's see that again. I'll do a different version of it. See, hand butt first like this. Yeah, I take the gun. You spin around and shoot yes. him. Yeah, boy, that's pretty good. I wouldn't want to be up against you. And now, what about these holsters? We've what? been talking about you designing holsters, and I understand this is something special. Well, 1951... I started in pictures, and I watched the different holsters he had in pictures. For instance, here's a holster that Tom Mix had worn some years ago. And just a regular flap holster. You stick a gun in it, and you can hardly pull it out, see? You can pull it out, and it has a clock. Well, I designed this holster with a metal around it, which I hold the United States patent on now. You just put your thumb back here, cock the hammer back while it's still in the holster, see? Finger out the trigger. And because it's metal, it'll yeah, stay around. Yes. It doesn't bind. Yes, the fingers are the trigger. They come level. I fire. You mean you don't put your finger on the trigger until no. you get it all the way out? That's right. There's a lot of boys that uh, put a hole in their foot. They're huh. faster than the trigger and they're slow on a draw. <laughs> Shoot their kneecap <laughs> off. Well, now, what about people like um, Arness and O'Brien? Could they beat the fellows that they portray? Would they be faster than Wyatt Earp? I think so. They were very fast. But, you know, a lot different uh, facing an angry man with a gun and a television camera. 
Well, I don't know. Cameras can get pretty angry. For instance, this one's telling me that right now, I'd better tell them about a great spaghetti sauce mix. And this is one that all the ladies at home will want to hear. We'll be right back. We're back at Arvo Ajalo's Fast Draw Gun Shop, and uh, we've been talking about the TV westerns. Now let's talk about the real, real McCoy. This is Wells Fargo gun. What yes, kind? it's a Henry rifle. And uh, this belongs to Audie Murphy yes, now. Yes, it does. Let's say I wanted to buy this. How much would it cost me? $2,500. Boy, and what did it cost when it was new? $18. Inflation triple time, <laughs> quadruple time. What about that pistol there from uh, Tombstone? The Tombstone Sheriff had this gun that would kill four men. But there are only uh, three notches there. Well, he killed himself with the... And how negligent. <laughs> he didn't even think of notching it. No, that's right. <laughs> well, you have many other things, like the Paladin holster. This is the first one. But we're going to pause for station identification, come back to meet the youngest fast draw artist. She uh, belongs to the kitty car set. It's uh, his daughter, Valerie, who's only four years old. We'll be right back. This portion of On The Go has been brought to you by... Geritol, America's number one tonic. Geritol, the fast-acting, high-potency tonic that helps you feel stronger fast. Jack Linkletter will be back with the second half of On The Go right after station identification. Here's the second half of On The Go, starring Jack Linkletter. Brought to you by Stride, the heavy-duty self-polishing wax for all your floors. Stride is another quality product of Johnson's Wax. I'm back with uh, Arbo Jallo, and um, I said that you were going to meet the fastest gun drawer around, and here she is. Valerie, would you come in here? This is four-year-old Valerie, and she is pretty fast. Turn and face that camera. I'll count three, and then you hit the lens. One, two, three, drop. Hey, that's pretty fast. Very good. You met John. John, come on in here. The old sheriff here shot me over stealing his cows and your girl, I think it was. And the prettiest member of the family, the missus. Hi, how are you? Hello. And you're pretty fast with a gun, too. Yes, pretty fast. And you have a new baby. Yes, about four months old. She's a real cutie. Make holsters that small? That's right. You do? I'll make them any size. You, you, any size. Yes. Fit right over the diapers. <laughs> yeah. Well, we'll meet this uh, fast-shooting family in just one minute. First of all, I have a message for you. Well, that's very good. This poor fellow has quite a stomachache after all that <laughs> wax bullets you shot into it. And uh, where most housewives, I guess, are talking over the back fence, you're out shooting the back fence. Yes, having fun with it. How long have you been shooting? Several years. And Arvo, I imagine you've taught quite a few women to shoot, besides your wife, uh, yes, movie uh, actresses. Marilyn Monroe, Mara Blanchard, Lorraine Day. How is a Marilyn Monroe at the quick draw? From the hip, pretty good. A nice hip, <laughs> very nice yes. hip. What about other stars? Who, who would you say is the fastest among the Western stars? Uh, Peter Brown, Lawman, and Sammy Davis Jr. He's wonderful. Yeah, you, in fact, that's his goal right yes, there, isn't it? I hear it, is, yes. And that, he does that in his nightclub act. I've seen him twirling. Yeah, he's twirling. excellent. And Jerry Lewis, he's for relaxation. Jerry Lewis for yes. relaxation, yes. shooting his head. No. He would do something <laughs> crazy like oh, he's that. Great. Now, I noticed, Doris, that your daughter here has a little daisy rifle. Now, uh, I know that this isn't live ammunition that she shoots and all, but do you think that it's good for kids to, at that age, to become. Oh, I don't know, uh, rifles and guns part of their everyday life? It depends upon how they're supervised, and if they are supervised, it's just fine. They, uh, it is to the advantage of the child they're taught how to handle a gun, and especially of how to respect a gun. Uh, for instance, is John as intrigued with guns as most boys his age? Well, he likes other things better. He does. Such as chemical sets and uh, such things as that. <laughs> John, can we see a little bit of your fancy uh, work okay. here? Let me, why don't you face over here to this camera, and let's see you do some fancy drawing. Spinning and... Very good. <laughs> well, that's all right. That's good. And um, what, do you, would you like to go hunting and all? Do you like guns that much? Mm, mm, mm Why? What don't you like about hunting? Well, sometimes I just go hunting out for squirrels, not to kill them, though. For catch them in a cage, you hunt for pets. Oh, do you have pet squirrels? No, I, I have pet rabbits. And pet birds. Yeah, that bird. You walk into a back room here, and it says all kinds of things to you. Well, I thank you very much, folks, for allowing us to come here and visit. And this is quite a story that you personally have after your recovery from 
arthritis, and uh, it's quite a, a merit in your, on your right. chest. They should right. give you medals for that. Yeah. And right now, we're going to take a minute out, and we have a special message for the people at home. And then after that, we're going to talk to a lady that I visited with yesterday afternoon who has quite a story, too. We'll be right back. Thank you.